All right. So once again, welcome to Cooking with Essential Oils. And I'm glad you guys can be here on a Wednesday. I've got this recording now so I can you know, post it and send it to anybody who missed and are wanting to learn. If you have any friends that you maybe want to share this with, then just let me know and we can get it to them. Okay, so um, let me know if you can't hear me very well or something like that and just put that in the chat. Um, and yeah. Okay, so first off, um, many of you are familiar with doTERRA, but just to give a little overview of doTERRA essential oils, um, I'll share with you why I've chosen doTERRA. So with essential oils, and today there's really not a lot of standardization in the industry. So there's nobody looking out to see, okay, are they following these sort of guidelines for purity of the essential oil or even potency with the essential oil that like if it's truly a good therapeutic oil has the right balance of those different things. And um, through the years, I've, as I've been watching different um, essential oil companies come and go and come into the scene, uh, I have always been impressed with doTERRA's stance on their purity. Back in the day when I first started using essential oils, I thought that doTERRA's testing standards and everything were, there's no way they could get better. They were the best that I was seeing, but I didn't think they could get better. Well, I was wrong. <laughs> Here, what, almost nine years later, they just continue to improve their testing techniques to make sure that they are pure. They, can, they continue to be more and more transparent about what's, what the balance is of their essential oils, where they're getting them from, and um, why they do the tests they do, and why they like triple check the tests they do doing third party standards or using third party testing and also in house testing and such to make sure that what needs to happen with these essential oils and the testing is indeed happening. So that every time we pick up that bottle, it's going to do what we need it to do. Now, um, one of the things that I think is really great is the they have this website source to you. So source to you.com. It's incredible. If you want to learn about their testing standards, go to source to you.com. If you want to learn about like their co-impact sourcing, um, go to source to you.com. Um, basically I, I could do a whole webinar on, um, on their co-impact sourcing efforts and how we're impacting these you know developing countries all over the world by doing you know fair trade fair wage um, creating co-ops in these areas um, building depending on the need you know drilling wells or if they need a school building a school or a hospital or something like that whatever that community is needing to thrive and and grow that's what we do and so it's not just biggest bang for your buck thing, because really if biggest bang for your buck, that's going to fizzle out. You have to support that community. You have to empower that community. And that's what doTERRA does. And it's really quite amazing, the different stories. And, and you can even go on Healing Hands. It's the Healing Hands Foundation and these sourcing trips and stuff like that where you can go and actually see the growers and the distillers out there in these countries and um, see the impact that doTERRA is having. Okay, so there's three methods of use for doTERRA's essential oils. You have topically, which you're probably familiar with, applying it directly to the skin. Aromatically, that's you know classic use in a, dis in a diffuser, you're just breathing it in which is very, very powerful for the mood, for brain function, lungs, things like that. Um, and then also with doTERRA, because of those standards that we were talking about, 
internally, you can use doTERRA's essential oils, almost all of them, okay? They have, um, the ones that can be taken internally have a supplement label on them. We follow FDA standards regarding labeling. So if our essential oil says, has supplement facts on it, it, is, it has been proven to be safe to take internally as directed. So when we're cooking with essential oils, like I say, we can use them internally. And so we get this potent use of essential oil, these potent herbs in our cooking without all the chopping. So we can get this um, amazing basil flavor and basil um, smell without having to chop up a bunch of basil or um, cilantro and different things like that and um, have these different therapeutic benefits that come from the essential oil and also they're crazy tasty. <laughs> One of my family favorites is peppermint brownies. Take your favorite brownie batter, add six drops of peppermint essential oil to it before, and mix it in, cook it up, boom, fantastic peppermint brownies. So when you are doing this, um, you need to really keep in mind three words, convert, dilute, delay. All right, so in convert, Try to, you need, you can't, <laughs> because they're so potent and concentrated, if the recipe calls for a teaspoon of, um, oh, let's see, rosemary, you are not gonna do a teaspoon of rosemary essential oil. Um, the ratio is about one drop to one teaspoon. Some of the really, potent oils, the kind of the hotter oils, like maybe, um, what do you call it? Like oregano and things, that's a really hot oil. Kind of the ones that, like if you look in your different book and your resources, if you need to dilute to apply them topically, rather than doing one drop, do like one toothpick, like a stick a toothpick in the essential oil and or like put a drop on a toothpick and then mix mix that toothpick into your recipe kind of stir your stuff with the toothpick and um and it's you would you would think how is that going to do anything oh it it does trust me it's quite amazing okay so about one drop to one teaspoon in your recipes as you know it's called for kind of converting that um, dilute now to help get that essential oil throughout the whole um, mixture through a whole recipe find the part the part in your recipe that ha is kind of oily because remember essential oils are lipophilic so where's your lipid? Where's your lipid in your recipe? Whether there's, you know, some milk or some like vegetable oil or olive oil, um, coconut oil, something like that. And mix the essential oil into that oil, that lipid and, um, you know, the fats in milk and stuff like that will help to distribute that essential oil through the whole, um, through the whole batch. Okay. Now, um, the last part is, oh, so savory ones, because we can do sweet and savory, right? So with the savory recipes, yeah, you're looking for your oil, your fat, your whatnot. Um, it can also mix in for like sweet recipes into like honey or some sort of syrup, okay? Um, that can work as a means to dilute the essential oil through your recipe. So the delay, the word delay comes from, for like hot recipes, okay? So since these essential oils, they're quite volatile, so they can, um, you know, diffuse into the air, obviously, it's one of the ways that we use them. And so if the, if the recipe is hot, sometimes it can really, you know, you put the drop on top, you're trying to mix it in, but 
and then it's, it's hot, so it kind of dissipates off as you're cooking and stuff. So adding that at the end at times will help with getting it distributed through your recipe and um, instead of just sloughing off while you're cooking. Okay, um, now I add the peppermint, like with the brownies, I added it in, right into the batter, batter before putting it into the oven. And it did not dissipate. It's, it stays in there. So very, very tasty. Okay, so some of the favorite essential oils that you're gonna hear me talk about tonight, um, use them in various ways and various recipes and sometimes very small amounts, but they have a powerful impact. So lavender is one that you can use. You've heard of that in cooking before. Um, not my favorite flavor, but it can be added to some different things to give it. Um, it, it, it blends well with some different flavors. Um, I, when I was first trying to use it, I thought, I don't know, I thought it would be good in more of a, you know, a sweet type of thing. I like it more on the savory side, personally. Peppermint, like I mentioned, um, as you might have guessed, the citrus oils are fantastic in recipes, whether it's lime or lemon, grapefruit. Grapefruit's one of my favorites. I don't care for the fruit as much, but the essential oil is fantastic. Um, tangerine, um, another one that we've added to our citrus mix. Um, one of the citruses that I'll touch on later, or that I want to talk about separately here, is bergamot. Now, it's kind of a different citrus, and so I wanted to talk about it because um, it has some different properties to it. It, it scents it's very mild as opposed to a lot of the other citrus oils that can really be in your face. And so bergamot and some of its different healing properties and emotional properties and things like that are, are fantastic. And we can incorporate that with different mild flavors. With the some other ones that we want to talk about tonight are cinnamon bark, cardamom, ginger, thyme, fennel, cilantro. Now, cinnamon is great to as a replacement one, one of those one-to-one -one ratio type of things, one teaspoon to one drop of cinnamon. Um, you may find you want to use even a little bit less. I like to put a drop into a spoon a lot of the times. If it's calling for just one drop or just a couple of drops, you, if you've worked with essential oils, you probably know it, sometimes it's hard just to get one drop out of that bottle. Sometimes you end up getting two out or more and you don't wanna ruin your recipe just because you know it came out too fast. So I like to put it in a spoon first and then mix it in to my recipes um, as kind of a checkpoint to make sure I have the right amount in there. So cinnamon itself is really great to help balance the blood sugar. So not only is it a great flavor, but it helps with, um, with blood sugar levels. It's really fantastic. Um, cardamom, when you breathe that in, it's really great respiratory, but it's also great for the digestive tract as well. Same with ginger in calming the digestive tract. Um, thyme is, um, is pretty fantastic. I mean, we use thyme all the time in our different recipes, and, um, and so we get to have that advantage in that compact, potent way in the essential oil. Fennel, great for calming the digestive tract as well. Um, really reminds me of like a black licorice taste, so that's fun. And then cilantro, uh, I really appreciate cilantro for a number of reasons. One of the main reasons is 
its ability to chelate heavy metals out of the body. So we are exposed to a lot of different things and they found that cilantro is really great for helping to get rid of those heavy metals that have built up in our bodies. And having the cilantro essential oil is like, it's a really powerful way to do that because it's so concentrated. You would have to eat so much cilantro to, to be the equivalent of two drops of cilantro essential oil. And which is really kind of that sort of a therapeutic level, those two drops to help with the whole chelation process. So, yeah. Okay. All right, so. Okay, this salsa is so fantastic. Um, again, you can find all of these recipes on um, doTERRA's blog, so doTERRA.com slash blog, well, it's really slash US slash EN for English, and then slash blog. But um, doTERRA's blog, just search doTERRA's blog through there, and you can search all of these different, different fantastic recipes. So three Roma tomatoes, jalapenos, bell peppers, orange bell pepper, yellow bell pepper, um, a can of black beans, fresh corn on the cob, um, one cup of chopped cilantro, um, red onion, tablespoon garlic powder, the cumin, and two teaspoons of salt. And I cherish my cumin. It's The cumin often comes in kind of some different specialty packs during the summer. So it's a really fun essential oil that if you get the chance to grab it and get it in your arsenal, make sure you do that because it's fantastic. So just combining these different things together and um, you can serve it immediately or um, cover and refrigerate. And, you know, with things like that, it's um, a lot of times covering and refrigerating, things get even better and better. These waffles are absolutely fantastic. The dark chocolate ginger waffles. Um, the directions on there are, are really great. They, <laughs> it even includes like shredded zucchini and things to, to get in there. So they're, I mean, these guys are fantastically wonderful for you as well. They're sweet, but then you also have the veggies in there and such, and it's fantastic. So um, it combines like the cocoa powder and a little bit of brown sugar. And so you can do whatever sweetener that you're wanting to do with that, of course. And um, if you're going away from the sugar aspect of it, but Part of it, you know, you're going to try to use whole wheat flour and things, and um, and they are fantastic. The essential oil with that, um, it, you use ginger with it, interestingly enough, and they're so tasty. Um, my phone is about to die. Oh. Um, I will continue, I'll continue to record and everything. So, um, yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. So I'll make sure and get this to you and, um, yeah, check out that blog and, um, yeah, and see those, try some different recipes. Let me know how it goes. Thanks again, Lisa. Uh, I appreciate it. I really do. No problem. You take care. So just in case it dies and whatnot, but we'll see how far, how long you can stay on. <laughs> okay.
Okay, so um, as you can see, like I wouldn't have really thought to have ginger added to waffles, but it's fantastic. Okay. Um, one of them I would definitely suggest to look up if you're an avocado fan is the lazy avocado sushi. So I love, love, love avocados. Um, <laughs> they're a little dangerous. Um, that's an inside joke for those of you that know me, but yeah. Um, using brown rice, soy sauce, some different essential oils like, um, let's see here, choose some lime and lemon. So adding some different citrus essential oils in with that, coconut shavings, some fresh pineapple and mango, and, um, and then having some um, good quality like salmon and things like that. Topping that in the, in the avocado um, is fantastic. So with this one, they're even recommending just like a toothpick of ginger as well in the recipe and, um, and just like swirling it around in when you're like cooking some of the different, in like the soy sauce and whatnot. And it really gives it this, this fantastic flavor. Ginger, shrimp, and mango. Oh my goodness. Okay, so these skewers are definitely ones that I'm going to be doing this summer as we do some barbecuing and whatnot. I love shrimp. I love seafood. And combining like some ginger and lemon essential oils um, with this um, wonderful mango and the shrimp, I just, I'm, I'm very, very excited for summer to come again so I can do these guys. Um, it just seems like a great pool side. My friend of mine has a pool and we'd love to do barbecues over there and this will just be fantastic. And it has this paleo crema, which is fantastic. Half, so you use um, some coconut milk and if you have like coconut cream, that works great too. And use the essential, the lemon essential oil, just a couple of drops. And, um, and juice and zest from a lemon as well. And um, like some, and you can do some like cilantro essential oil in that and maybe add some, just for like the look of it, adding some of that um, chopped cilantro just for the, the look as well. So probably just like one drop of cilantro and then add to the, the chopped cilantro just to how you like it. And I'm not sure if you've ever tried um, rosemary zucchini fettuccine or like zucchini, substituted zucchini for noodles. Uh, it, it works pretty fantastic. I've tried it several times and um, it really works out and it's such a healthy way to get your veggies and still like enjoy those wonderful sauces and things like that, that um, are, end up being kind of like a comfort food and whatnot. With zucchini, you can use zucchini, butternut squash, things like that, and um, and the recipe online with at doTERRA.com on their blog um, with the rosemary and all of that, and the just as you can see there with the light drizzle of oil and things, it's really great. I've used it with the zucchini noodles and the essential oils and just any, even a red sauce. So think of the different spices that you use in your red sauce and give it a shot. Substitute in some of the different essential oils. We've got the thyme, we've got the oregano, we've got the rosemary, those different things. And it can be fantastic. And it might take some trial and error because sometimes with those homemade recipes, we just are putting things in and you're not quite sure the measurements on it. So just remember, like with anything, you can always add more, but you can't take it out. So start small, maybe start with a toothpick and see how it goes. Start with one drop, see how it goes and, and move from there. So a classic is 
mashed potatoes. And uh, with this one, I just want to point out, when you're adding the essential oil, you could try the, the rosemary is a great one. That's the one that's recommended here. I would mix that in with the little bit of milk that you want to add at the end. Um, again, doing the whole end thing. And um, instead of maybe, because in this recipe, it's, it's fantastic. It, you are, you know, cooking some garlic up and some onions up and things and and grilling those first or um, frying those first and adding them into the mashed potatoes. It's fantastic. Um, and so saving that essential oil for the milk that you add and putting it at the end to get it through is quite fantastic. So we're on a potato stint here. We've got these glazed sweet potatoes and um, the essential oil that they recommend here is um, cinnamon. So eight drops of cinnamon and five drops of ginger essential oil are the um, essential oils for this recipe. So if you can just search the glazed spicy sweet potatoes and I, I wouldn't have really thought the, like the cinnamon in there, oh my goodness. And blending it with the ginger is just fantastic. The, this flavor combo with all, everything else that's going in there is um, it's just a die for. So here's some rice, another little side option here. So carrot with ginger, rice with mint. Now, uh, you probably are seeing a theme here. The ginger is a really popular one to cook with, and there's some really great recipes that involve this. Um, so the Moroccan beef is, I mean, doesn't that look good? It's really quite phenomenal. With this one, you have, um, you can do the cilantro in there, um, the ginger essential oil and just melding these flavors together and in, into this wonderfully healthy dish. It can really just add that extra step up for your recipes. With this recipe, it calls for like paprika. Uh, like I said, the cinnamon is another option that you can add in there. Teaspoon salt, the ginger essential oil, crushed red peppers, black pepper, roast beef, oil, um, chicken bouillon, sliced tomatoes, butternut squash, and the cilantro. So there's not a whole lot that's going into this. A lot of just the you know basic ingredients that you have and with these essential oils, it just brings, like I said, it just brings everything up to the next level. Alrighty, so with this Italian summer skewers, we've got like mozzarella balls on here, the, some cantaloupe and salami. So it's kind of like this sweet savory going on. You are using balsamic vinegar and brown sugar as well to, um, to drizzle over top and things. And yeah, just wow. So very tasty. Again, you can go to the doTERRA blog for the full directions. But um, so you're, you're just going to mix the balsamic vinegar with brown sugar in a saucepan over medium heat, stirring continuously until the sugar dissolves. You bring it to a boil, reduce the heat, and simmer until it reduces by half. And it'll take about 20 minutes. Let it cool and then add your rosemary essential oil. And onto cocktail skewer, thread the um, prosciutto mozzarella, 
the melon cubes and drizzle with that reduction and serve immediately. And yeah, wow. They've even got Brussels sprouts, asparagus recipe, and you can, I think you can kind of see here how, oh yeah, okay, I've cooked asparagus, I've cooked Brussels sprouts, but maybe adding some citrus to there with the lemon essential oil, I could figure out if that's a flavor that would work really well for me. Okay, so with, with doTERRA's essential oils, um, I, when I'm helping to people get these into their homes, I don't like to, you know, oh, hike up the prices and whatnot. I like to make sure everybody's getting them at my price, what I pay for them, because it's just so easy. Um, sure, you could go to my website and buy it retail, but I would much rather you get it at my price with your own wholesale account. Um, it's like Costco. So you pay a membership fee for each year and you can buy whatever you want at 25% off. And there's no monthly requirements. There's no selling requirements. Obviously there's a selling option where if you would like to do this as a business, empower people's health, teach them a new way of living, then awesome, let's chat. And I can share with you that business opportunity. It's incredible. doTERRA is growing so fast. Um, it's growing at the same right rate that Apple grew when it's starting out. And um, it, it's a fantastic company. Like thinking back to the source to you, um, what doTERRA is doing all around the world, I, I truly do feel honored to be a part of it. Now, um, for just getting into your home and getting started with it, uh, that membership it will pay for itself within a few oils anyways. So I, it's great to go that option. In the month of March, if you get like, okay, get your membership, and if you wanna stock up on some different oils, and I can help you pick the oils that would be best for your needs and your um, health situation, your goals, and um, help you to make a plan and using these essential oils, if you get um, like $200 in oils, you may have heard of the essential oil deep blue or the deep blue rub. Well, they're giving away both the rub and the oil for any purchase of 200, they call it PV, so point value or over, all right? So that could be your first order. There are kits that hit that 200 PV order and it weighs the $35 enrollment fee for your wholesale membership. And on top of that, doTERRA loves to do that, but if they do these, you know, get 200 PV and we give you this free stuff, they do that several times a year, yet, and also every month, if you choose to be on their monthly program, it's one of their options, not only do you get a percentage back on all of your orders, that are like over $50. It doesn't have to be over $50, but if it ends up being that, you get a percentage back. And always, no matter how much, if you're on that monthly program, your shipping gets reimbursed to you in points. And these points can be used like dollars. So some of the more expensive oils, I'll save up my points from the percentage back and from my shipping and get some of these more expensive ones absolutely free. And it definitely, adds up fast. It really makes it so you can empower your health and get some of these different essential oils and try them and see how they work with your family. So I just wanna thank you all for coming today and to this webinar. And if you have any questions, um, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, I would love to help you figure out what your goals are and get you on a path, a plan to reaching them. It's one of the funnest things ever. And whether that's with cooking or other health goals, um, other lifestyle changes that you're wanting to make, or you're wanting to just, you know, make more exciting by trying something new with these essential oils. They, they're such an amazing step forward in 
um, this recollection that we are a whole being, that if we focus on wellness and giving our body what it needs, it will take care of us. And so, yeah, thanks for coming tonight. And I hope you have a great one. I will talk to you all later. And good night.